Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're going to paint a cherry still life. For the reference image that I used for this painting, as well as a full list of materials, you can check the video description below. But before we get started, I wanted to show you something exciting. Ta-da! I finally got my silver play button from YouTube for reaching 100,000 subscribers. This is super exciting for me, and I'm really honored to have received it but I wanted to give a huge thank you to all of you because I could not have gotten this without you, your support, you always painting along with me, commenting on my videos and everything else. So thank you from the very bottom of my heart for this silver play button. If you wanna help me get my next play button, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And now let's get started. All right, here we have the reference image of the cherries that we're gonna to use today. And there's a link in the video description below to where you can download this image off of my website. And the one main difference that I want to do on here is the orientation of the canvas. I don't want to do it in landscape and have short cherries with lots of white space. I want really large cherries, so I'm going to do it in portrait and make the cherries take up the majority of my canvas. So let's start just with a pencil and loosely sketch in our cherries. Now our stems on our reference image, they start just below the top. And our cherry that comes down the farthest is about the same distance from the bottom. So I'm just gonna make those two marks there to indicate where the top and the bottom of my image is gonna be. Okay, now before we start drawing our images, we need to know how long the stems are in relation to the size of the cherries. Because we don't wanna draw you know, little circles down here and have these big long stems. Likewise, we don't want to make huge cherries and have these short little stems. Remember to hold your pencil out, mark it with your thumb where you see on the image. And when I look at my reference image, it looks like that's about the height of the cherry. The stem is, it's about twice the length as the height of the cherry. So if we divide this into three equal sections, just very loosely, that looks to be pretty close to three equal sections. So our cherries are gonna take up this section and everything above it is gonna be stem. So let's go ahead and start sketching them in. Notice that our cherry on the left, it comes up just a little higher than the cherry on the right. So I'm gonna start with that one. Take it to the top of this line that I just made and the shape doesn't have to be perfect. And the cherry, it's kind of, it's almost heart shaped, except it's kind of flat on the top. And it doesn't come all the way down to that line. This cherry doesn't. So I bring it in a little. It's got a little bit of kind of a rounded off point at the bottom, just a bit. This cherry is shaped the same way, but it's at an angle. And it doesn't come all the way to this top line. So just loosely sketch that out. And your cherries can be shaped a little different than in the image. They can be different sizes. It's art. You're not making a photo, you're making a painting. This cherry feels just a little bit too big to me, so I'm just gonna bring it in just a little bit. Make sure that the two cherries still touch. I think that's better. Okay, so right here on the top of this one, we have a little bit of a line, and that's where the cherry is going to be highlighted and darker on this side, and it's where the stem is going to come out. So we'll just sketch that line in there, and same with this cherry. It comes about from here, over, kind of flat. It kind of mirrors this shape here a little bit. And then it's gonna come around and mirror this shape now. And meet up about at the bottom there. Now we can draw our stems since we know where the stems are coming from. So we have a stem here that comes up and it kind of curves. This stem is shorter, it doesn't come all the way to our top line. And this one comes out of the center of that shape and it comes up, crosses that one, and meets up with that top line. So there's our very basic shape of our cherries. You can even sketch out where your shadow's gonna go 
if you can even see it at this point. I can't really see where my shadow's gonna go because my cherries, I sketched them out quite a bit. But we'll just pretend that you can kind of see the shadow right there. And a little bit here on this one. About right in there. All right, now I'm ready to start on an underpainting. And on our image here, the background is about pure white. And I don't really want a pure, pure white background. I want it to have a little bit of life to it. So I'm actually gonna do an underpainting of gray. And I'm gonna use Mars Black and unbleached titanium because it's a little bit warmer than titanium white and we'll keep this from being such a cold, neutral gray on the background. And remember, this gray I'm doing, it's only the underpainting for the background. I will put white over it later, but thinly so that that gray still shows through a bit. And of course, my matte medium. I'm gonna use my half inch angle brush just because this is a large area and I just wanna get it on there and be done with it. So I'm gonna load up with the matte medium first and just mix up kind of a light to medium gray. I don't want it to be terribly dark. That looks about right. Now when we come in to start painting, we don't want to come right up to this line where the cherry stems are. Remember that this is just a line to, to kind of placehold for the stems. Our stems are going to be a little bit wider, so leave some room for that. So I'm going to come right up to it. and it's a little wider on the end. So I kind of moved it away from the stem there. And same here. And this line doesn't have to be perfect and beautiful. We're gonna paint over it. And I'm just loosely gonna go around my cherries. If I go into my pencil line or don't go all the way to my pencil line, it's okay. This is the half inch angle brush out of my line of brushes. And they are available on my website now, so if you haven't gotten a set yet, go get them before they're gone. They've been selling really quick and it takes a long time to get them manufactured, so if I run out, it might be a while. Let's continue around here. Don't cover up your shadow if you blocked it in. If you didn't block in your shadow, then don't really worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. And I should probably move to a smaller brush in those tight little areas, but I'm already done with it, so I won't worry about it. Now right here, I made some adjustments to this cherry, so I need to remember which lines are the new lines and which lines are the ones that I don't want. So I covered up the lines that I don't want, but if I were to leave a lot of those, then I might get confused later on. All right, up here at the stem again, see how I left a little bit of a wider line? And right the, there at the end, we'll just come out a bit and just give it a kind of a loose, bigger shape there at the top. And same thing with this stem here. Again, remember where your lines are there. I had to bring that in a little bit. Don't cross over your cherry stem lines. Make sure you leave that big X in there for them. If you're painting on little canvases like this and you're having a hard time with the canvas sliding all over, just get a piece of painter's tape and put it on the back and tape it down to your table. I thought about doing that, but then I like having the freedom to kind of rotate my canvas around, so 
I'll just deal with it. See, my color's not real consistent. Sometimes it's a little darker, sometimes it's thinner, sometimes it's lighter. It's not really gonna show at the end, so it doesn't really matter. You'll be able to tell that it was there because it will add to the overall effect once we're done, but the color itself doesn't matter. Okay, now we wanna let this dry and then we'll come in and do the underpainting on our cherries, but I wanna let it dry so I don't drag any of that dark color in. All right, I'm not actually sure what just happened to my camera, but you missed this part and it's really not that big of a deal. All I did was I used my number eight filbert, a little bit of matte medium, and I do actually wanna do another layer on these anyway, so it's okay. I used cadmium red medium and alizarin crimson and mix them together. And that's because I don't feel like either one of these colors on its own is the perfect cherry color, but mixed together, they make a really gorgeous red that I really, really love for cherries. So I picked up quite a bit of paint because I wanna make sure that this color is quite opaque. I'm kind of following my lines a little bit with the tip of my filbert because I don't want to lose those lines. I just, I, I don't want to be able to see them in the finished product, but I want to be able to tell where they are as I add other layers. So I'm using the filbert because the round tip really helps with creating these nice smooth round shapes. If you don't have a filbert, you can use a bright. It's not impossible. I just find that it's easier with a rounded shape on the end of the brush than with the square angle of a, of a bright. And see, now you can start kind of refining the shape of your cherries. If you brought your gray underpainting in too far, you can take this red right over top of it. If you didn't bring your gray underpainting in to the cherry far enough, don't sweat that. You can leave that little bit of white showing. See, I've still got white showing all the way around my cherries. That's not a big deal. I'm just using this color as an opportunity to really start making sure that the shape of my cherries is what I want. And actually, this cherry is kind of shaped strange. It's a little flat on the top. So I'm just gonna reshape him a little bit. Mostly right here. And I bring that up just a bit, up and out. And see, I'm going over top of that gray. It's not a big deal. Even if your paint is a little transparent and you can still see that gray, once we've added the other layers to it, you won't be able to see it. Okay, now my color is on there and I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. So we can come back and start doing shadows and highlights. And while that dries, I think we'll start working on the stems. Now with the stems, the temptation can be there to look at the image and say, those stems are green and just paint them in green or even yellow. It's pretty yellowish green. But I also see a lot of brown in there, not only up at the tips of the stems, but throughout the stems, there's a bit of brown showing. So I'm gonna take some burnt umber and that's what I'm gonna underpaint my stems with. I have my little quarter inch angle brush, a little bit of matte medium, and some burnt umber. And we're gonna just kind of draw it out. We can refine the shape. Again, you don't have to worry about taking it all the way to the edge of the white. If the white is too wide somewhere, don't worry about that. And if your stem gets too wide somewhere, don't worry about that. You can cover over that later. Just make sure it's a nice smooth shape. And as we get up here, you can put a little heavier pressure to widen that out. Let's do our other stem. When you're doing the brown here, you don't have to worry about crossing over your stems. Once we start adding the highlights to the stems, you can decide which stem is in front and which one is behind. But right now with this underpainting, that doesn't matter. 
Take that up here and a little heavier pressure to widen them out at the tip. And make sure that you can see that all the way in here. Make sure also that your stems aren't popping straight off of the top edge of the cherry. They start down into the cherry, so make sure you do that. All right, my cherries aren't totally dry yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna take a little bit of ultramarine blue and we're gonna mix some ultramarine blue in to get our shadow area. I don't wanna use black to make the shadow area because black is gonna desaturate the red. So it'll be darker, but it'll be a little desaturated and, and not appear as vibrant as everything else. The shadows will look a little bit more flat. But I feel like using the ultramarine blue is gonna help darken the color without desaturating it. So I'll get just a little bit of matte medium and I'll get my red mixture, but I'm really picking it up in the alizarin crimson. So there's a tiny bit of that cadmium red, but it's mostly alizarin crimson. I'll come over here and just pull a little bit of ultramarine into it, a little at a time until we get a nice dark color. There we go. I'll kind of scoop it up on the end of my brush. Now let's look at our image and see where darkest areas are. And the darkest areas, it looks like we have a bit up here on the area behind the stem, obviously right here where the two cherries meet on each of them, and a little bit right over here on the other side of that little crease on the cherry. We've got a bit of some darker color underneath them, but it's not quite to this extent, so we won't worry about that part just yet. Let's come in here where the two cherries meet. I'm back to my filbert, by the way, and I'm just dusting it in. Since this red isn't completely dry, it's mixing in there a little bit. Don't worry if you accidentally take it outside of your shape. And let's get a bit of that on here. If you can't see exactly where your cherries meet, that's okay. They have the same value there. It's dark between both of the cherries. I lifted a little of my paint off of there. And that's kind of what happens when you keep working the same spot like I was just doing. So lay it down and leave it alone. You can come back and add more later. Let's get some of this dark color up here. I'm barely touching my canvas and I'm really just using the very tip of this brush. We'll drag it down here just a little bit. That light pressure is helping it kind of blend or at least thin out. So even where this red is dry, it's thinning out over top of it and almost looking like it's blending in. We've got just a little hint of it throughout here and we can add some down in here. In that spot that pulled up a bit, once it's dry, I'll be able to add more. But just remember that when paint starts coming up, don't try and go over it and over it thinking, oh, I'll just add more because it's pulling up because you keep working it. So just leave it alone. And once it's dry, you can add more. Okay, we've got a bit of this dark color up in here on either side of the stem. And then it's coming down here. I'm gonna flip it upside down. I want a nice hard line on this side of it because that's where my highlight's gonna be. But then I want it to kind of fade back here a bit. Throw a little bit of matte medium in there so this color is nice and transparent. And we'll just dust it into here where we see some slightly darker colors. There's a little bit right here. And let's add some brighter parts. So now I'm just going to pick up cadmium red. No alizarin crimson in it. And we'll test that out. If it looks a little orange, then 
we'll do something else to it. But I, I want to avoid adding white to my red in order to lighten it because that's going to make it pink. And there's very few areas on these cherries that actually look pink. So let's just bring this cadmium red in and we're just going to lightly dash it where we see some of the brighter areas. Use light pressure. Because that light pressure, it kind of gives you a dry brushing effect. And that's where the, the texture of the canvas is going to pick up some of the paint on the high spots, but the low spots that are already filled with that dark color are going to remain visible and it helps kind of make those colors blend together without blending together, if that makes sense. So that's why whenever you guys show me your painting and you're worried about being able to see the texture through the canvas, I always tell you not to worry about it. If you know that's going to happen, just let it happen. Use it to your advantage. It can help make blending a lot easier. Let's go ahead and do that to this one too. Don't worry about where you're seeing the white. Right now we can see quite a bit of white in our image on the highlighted areas, particularly like right here. But I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm just going to get the brighter color in there, kind of redefining that line a little. And then dry brushing it into there, even overlapping the dark area just a little bit. And I do think this color is just a little on the orange side, but I'm not worried about it because I think I know how I'm going to take care of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue. We have just a hint going on up in here. You know what would be really fun with these cherries is to take kind of a a Favist approach. And Favism is an art style where things are painted in colors that that they typically wouldn't be. So you know if you see like a Matisse portrait where his face has green and blue in it, that that's an example of Favism. And I think it would be cool to kind of take these cherries and maybe paint them blue or you know something, give them a little bit of a a Favist type style. Okay, I think that that is pretty good. Let's see. I'm going to let that spot dry a little bit and then we'll come back and darken it some more. So I'm going to let these dry for a few more minutes. And while they dry, I think we'll work on the stems. So I've got some cadmium yellow light here and I already have my ultramarine blue out. All right, I'm going to pick up just a bit of ultramarine blue. The stems have a green tone to them, but they're still quite yellow. And we've got the burnt umber under, which is going to show through a little bit too. Let's mix up enough that we can pick up quite a bit of this color. Use it a little on the thicker side. That will kind of help the yellow not be so transparent. So I didn't pick up any matte medium. All right, I think that's a pretty good color. Make sure we've got a good load on our brush. And instead of drawing a line up like that, I'm going to use the edge of my brush to kind of define that line and I'm going to drag it over just a bit. I'm using really light pressure, sometimes more pressure than others, and see how it's kind of breaking. And it's giving us that impression that there's a bit of a texture going on in the color, that it's, it's a little bit speckled. It's not solid green, it's not solid brown. And right here is where we can say which stem is in front, which stem is behind. So I stopped that right at this other stem, and then I'll start up again on the other side of it. Now right up here where the stem gets kind of weird, just adding just a little bit of it. I'm going to take the long point of my angle brush right in the center of my stem and just kind of push downward. And that kind of 
pushes it outside of the shape a little bit. Let's do the same thing on this one. Just light pressure here. Not covering everything on the stem. Not even fully going from one side of the stem to the other. And the point of my angle brush. I know that's really crazy looking and bright, but don't worry about it. Okay, a few more minutes to dry because I wanna to touch up that darker spot before we start really adding highlights on our cherries. All right, let's go ahead and fix up that spot that got a little ugly. So, mostly alizarin crimson. A little hint of phthalo blue, nice and dark. And now we can come in, very good. All gone. Dust that out a bit. And let's just deepen some of these other shadows. Take it over top if your cadmium red got in too far. So see, I just kind of dusted it over it there. Helps give a nice transition. A little bit of a thinner version of the color. I'm not picking up quite as much paint. And I'm just gonna work these shadow areas a little bit more. Make sure they're good and dark. And just like all month long when we've been doing layers, you can keep doing these layers as much as you need to. You know, if something happens and you get a spot that you don't like, remember to tell yourself, this is not my final layer. Nothing has to be your final layer until you look at it and you say, oh yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for there. Then you can stop. But if it doesn't look right, keep going. And that got a little lighter than I wanted, so I'm just dusting some of that darker color over it there at the bottom. Just take a hint of it over that part. And I wanna make sure that the crease on the other side of this bright line is good and dark. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit darker, a little bit heavier, and get right down in there. Dust it out a bit. All right. I think that's starting to look pretty good. So remember when I said I think that this orange is just a little too orange for the cherry look that I'm going for, but that I think I know how I'm gonna fix it later. And then also remember where I said I didn't wanna mix white with the red because I don't wanna really have any pink in here. So I've actually decided that I can remedy both of those at the same time. So I'm not gonna worry about either one of them just yet. Let's start working in some of our bright highlights, particularly the bright, shiny red that's right around here and a bit in here, not the white edges just yet. So I'm gonna take just kind of a pinpoint of titanium white, and I'm gonna grab a little bit of my cadmium yellow. And I'm gonna mix it in with some of my cadmium red. Get a nice bright color maybe just a tiny speck of titanium white. Let's put some matte medium in there so it's a nice thin color. And wherever we see these brighter colors, let's come in and start dashing them in. So right around there is where I feel like it's the brightest and clearly this is a very orange color and we don't want orange cherries. 
but I think I know how I'm gonna remedy that. So we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be horrible. This is just me experimenting right now. Dash some of that in here. And a bit down in here. I don't wanna take it too far toward the dark area, but if you do, if you feel like you get it too far over like that, just come back to your alizarin crimson, maybe just a hint of the phthalo blue, and you can just dust right back over it. No big deal. Now in both of our cherries, right around here and right around here, we do have kind of a brighter orange spot. So I'm gonna do that again with my cadmium yellow, a little bit of the cadmium red. So this color's quite yellow still. It's a little orangey, a little bit of white. And let's come in and make those little marks. So there's kind of my brighter yellow spot. And we've got one up here as well. Our stems are dry, so while the cherries dry, let's go ahead and work on that. I'm gonna get quite a bit of matte medium. I'm back to my quarter inch angle brush quite a bit and just a little bit of the burnt umber. See how thin and transparent that color is. And oh, I might add just a tiny speck of ultramarine blue in there because the ultramarine is gonna gray down that brown a little bit. There we go, I like that color. Very, very thin. And let's just go over our stems again. See, because this color is so thin and transparent, I can go ahead and apply it to my entire stem if I want to. Maybe I'll leave some spots where that bright green does show a little, but it's kind of kicking it back a bit so it's not so shocking and bright. Kind of bringing it to a little bit more of a neutral, a neutral area so they're not the center of attention in our painting. We don't want the stems to be the center of attention. So we're almost glazing the stems here. And notice I'm just working super loose. I don't care if it gets into my background. Up here at the top, I am gonna get a heavier concentration of brown, maybe still just a speck of ultramarine. See, this color is much more opaque than the first layer. I'm gonna come up here with the corner of my angle brush and I'm just kind of tapping it into there. And I can come in here and I'm just, I'm really loosely just tapping it. I'm not trying to draw lines or anything like that. I'm just tapping that color in. And let's go ahead and glaze those ends too because I still don't want that super bright green in there. That looks much better. Let's get some of that darker color right there. And we can take some of this darker, more opaque color into a few spots if we want, just using the edge of my brush. I'm just kind of dragging it in where I want it. Barely, barely touching my canvas. I'm not, I'm not drawing a hard line down the edge of the stem. Just saying, I want it darker right there and barely touching to make it a little darker. Let's do the same thing over here. Just add a few little dark spots in there. Darken up and shape that end a little. And then lightly glaze it over that green. And then get in some of those little angular bit shapes. I know it's so messy looking in there right now. It's just a total catastrophe, but we haven't painted our background and we can cut in around those however we want to after. It's a great thing about not painting your background in first, then you don't have to worry too much about getting those stems absolutely perfect. All right, our cherries are dry. Let's go ahead and bring those back to a more cherry color. So I'm still using my filbert. I'm gonna get a good amount of matte medium. See how much I picked up? I'm gonna bring it over here to my alizarin crimson 
and mix just a hint of the paint in. See how thin that color is? I'm gonna pick that up and I'm just gonna kinda glaze over every part of my cherries. You wanna make sure that you're using this color nice and thin, otherwise you're just gonna cover up everything you did underneath it. And that's just gonna kinda balance the colors out. It's gonna tone down the orange, bring it back to a bit of a red. And that's pretty much exactly what I was hoping it would look like. Good, it worked. We'll do the same thing over here on this one. Right over top of that bright orange. And while that dries, let's put it in our shadows. So in our shadows, you can barely see them. They look to me to mostly be about the unbleached titanium color. However, they are reflecting just a tiny bit of the cherry color. If you look really, really close, under the edge of the shadow on the cherry on the right, there's a tiny hint of pink in there. So let's get just a little bit of our base color that we used on the cherries, mostly on the side of the cadmium red with just a hint of quinacridone. I'm gonna wipe quite a bit of that off so it's not so thick. I'm gonna come in here right at the bottom of the cherry and I'm just lightly scrubbing that color in not filling the whole shadow, but I am going all the way to the base of the cherry. See that? Just a tiny bit of it. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Cleaned off my brush and dried it on a paper towel. I'm gonna to get some matte medium and some unbleached titanium. Mix it up so it's kind of on the thin side not quite thin like the glaze we did on the cherries, but just thinner. And you wanna make sure that that red is pretty dry, and I think it is because I added it so thin. I'm gonna come in here and start sketching that color, take it about to the bottom of the cherry. But see, because I made that color transparent, that little hint of red is shining through there. And I'm not worried about going over the gray. Just fill in that whole space. And same thing on our other cherry. Up to the bottom of the cherry. Maybe that's just a little too transparent on this one. There we go, much better. So I know that doesn't look like a shadow color, but once we paint in the background white, that will look much more like a shadow color. And I feel like I'm ready to start painting in the background. So I'm gonna put out just a little bit more titanium white. Back to my half inch angle brush, bit of matte medium. Now for some of the detail work, you might wanna move away from an angle brush, from this larger one anyway. So I'm gonna start around the outer edges and just paint in all of this with the white. And that little bit of matte medium is gonna make your white slightly on the transparent side, and that's okay. If you are getting brush lines and you don't like that, just lightly very lightly swipe over it and that'll get rid of hard brush lines. If your shadow is still wet, just stop before you get to it. Yeah, I'm gonna move down to a smaller brush for these other areas. I'm just gonna fill in the larger first.
Let's see, now that white that we put on there has just a little bit more life to it because you can see a, some variation, a little bit of nuance in there because of the gray underneath shining through. If you wanted just a pure solid white, you could do that too. I just think it looks a little more interesting like this. And if you're doing the background like I am, play with the opacity of the white. Make some areas really opaque, very, very white, and some much more transparent, and see what you think about that. Okay, I'm gonna go to my quarter inch angle, and we'll fill in the rest of the area, still using a little matte medium with my white. And we can come up to the edge of the stem. Now notice I'm not going like this and drawing a hard line. I'm gonna let it be a little on the soft side. So I, I'm just kind of coming down like that, and if it covers part of the stem, that's okay. If it doesn't, that's okay. If a little bit of that gray shows through, guess what? That too is okay. And I'm gonna get right into that little corner and pull that around the edge of the cherry. Using the same brush stroke, just on the side, so that I can't get a perfectly hard edge that's gonna help us maintain a little bit of a painterly look. I think it helps kind of separate the cherries from the background a bit. But we'll get right in close and cover up any of those little white spots that we left showing before. You can go right over the edge of the shadow. Shadow doesn't have a hard edge. Very, very soft. I'm gonna keep the table, or the, the background anyway, pretty white around the shadow. That's also gonna help it appear to be a shadow. Let's finish up here by our stems. Using very light pressure. I love that little broken line right there next to the stem. All right, this is where we can start kind of being a little bit more detailed to get in there and make the ends of those stems shaped how we want them. But I think that if you just do it really loosely, like I'm doing here, the softer those lines are, the less opportunity you have to look at them and say, oh, well, it's shaped weird. If it's very, very soft and there's not a lot of hard lines to look at in there, I think that you can give the idea of the shape that it's supposed to be without stressing too much about the shape that it actually is, if that makes sense. So just get your brush in there and just kind of tap out an area that you don't want, cut around another area, there. Now I like the shape of the top of that cherry much better than that one. Let's see, it's still, it's very, very soft shape. And we'll do the same thing here. Just lightly carving down around the edge of it. These little corners, you kind of have to turn your brush on the edge to get into there. Hope I'm not making you dizzy, spinning my canvas around like that. Super light and loose here. Cut off that little spot that I didn't like. That stem got a little wide there, so I just brought it in a bit. So this is very similar to what we did with the chair on the, oh, I can't even remember what I called it. The video with the chair against the wall with the rust. It's linked in the information I card up here. But the way we're kind of carving around these cherries and stems, very similar to that. And I feel like it kind of helps everything have a bit more of a integrated look you know, rather than saying, 
These are cherries that are just kind of slapped down on a white background that has nothing to do with the cherries. Now I feel like this background kind of looks like it's, you know, part of the scene. It's not just a random white background that the cherries are on. Super light there. It's kind of fading the edge of the cherry just a little bit. Nice and solid here. Dust over the edge of that shadow. I thought about doing the background a different color because I really didn't like the stark white. But I'm glad that I went with it now. Now I'm really liking that. All right, this is gonna be the, the part that tests my patience, carving into these little tiny areas. Any little bits of red that got away from us, we can easily cover. There we go. Not too bad. Just do the spot between the stems. And we're about done with the background. I actually might come through and just add some areas that are a little bit more opaque than others. And really it'll just be done the exact same way that I'm doing this part. So I won't make you watch that. But as you can tell right now, you can see where all my brush strokes have gone. And if you like that look, that's perfectly fine. You can leave it like that. I want to have a little bit more of a melded look. I don't want to be able to see my brush strokes going up and around the stem. Just a hint of some white in there. So I'll just show you real quick what I'm going to do. And then I'm actually gonna put you in time-lapse. I know I'm trying not to use time-lapse this month, but some things I have to do and I don't wanna make you have to watch it. So in just areas where I feel like the surface is a little bit uneven for my taste, I've got quite a good amount of white on here. And I'm just gonna lightly come in and just dry brush, I'm not trying to make it all solid. I'm just saying that this spot is a little bit more of an even, application than it was before. And I'm gonna do that kind of randomly. Again, this is very similar to the wall technique in that chair video. So I'm just gonna do that in a few spots and then we'll come finish up our cherries. Okay, so there, see, I didn't get rid of all of the variation in the color of our background. I just evened a few spots out. Let's go ahead and add our highlights. So I'm still using my quarter inch angle. I picked up some more matte medium. I wanna make this white very, very thin because I don't wanna have it overpower the cherries. We have a little bit that comes right across here. We'll just kind of cut that around here. See, I'm doing it still very loosely. And then this part of the cherry kind of fades into the background from it. Let's bring that down the edge a bit. And there's a tiny, tiny hint of it right in here. If you want to use a different brush rather than an angle, that's okay. Go ahead and do that. Got some on this cherry here, quite a bit actually. Just kind of take it all the way down the edge. Well, not all the way, 
pretty close. We'll stop it right about there. And right in here, we've got a little, barely, barely touching the canvas, see that? I have quite a bit of paint on this brush, but because I'm barely touching the canvas, I just put down a tiny speck of that white. I'm actually gonna take it out just a little farther and maybe put just a little bit brighter right there. Same thing over here. We've got a nice bright white spot there, but I'm not working on the bright white spots just yet. More matte medium. I want this white thinned out to almost nothing. And I'm gonna come from that line and just lightly pull that out just a bit. Same thing over here a little. Don't worry if there's still a line. We're just getting kind of a brighter white and a paler white. Looks like we have a little bit of kind of a bright spot right in there too. Okay, I'm gonna give this 10, 15 minutes to dry. We are almost done. All right, that's dry. I am a little nervous about this part, but only because I don't want to go back and forth a thousand times. Not because I'm worried that it's not going to work out. Again, I'm going to pick up quite a bit and go into my alizarin crimson. It makes a very, very thin color. See, it's super, super thin. And we're going to glaze over top of this one more time. Now, I'm not going to glaze this bright color all the way to the edge of my cherries. Just barely. I did take it over that brighter spot that I put in the middle. And I'm taking it into those bright white highlights, but I'm not covering them completely. Now I'm gonna get just a tiny bit more alizarin crimson and just a tiny bit of my cadmium red. Mix it with the matte medium and everything that's already on my brush, but it's still quite thin. And if you have little bits where you've got a line from that white, see I'm just lightly tapping over that line and it's taking it away without really changing the color of anything. Just getting rid of a hard line. Oh, almost forgot that little piece there. And if while you're doing this, you lose your orange, you can put it back in, let it dry, and just glaze that bit of orange one more time. That looks much better. And I have my bright white highlight in there. I'm gonna take my little number two round, a little bit of matte medium, Mix it in with a little bit of white. Now we can get really detailed on our highlights. So I wanted to keep this area very bright right here where the cherry kind of fades into the background because of the highlight. So I'm just lightly kind of sketching that back in. We can do the same thing on our edges where we want to maintain a super bright edge. I'm just going to come right in with the tip of my brush and make it super bright, just right there. And remember at any point, if it gets away from you, if you lose the shape, if you get too much of the color, whatever happens, I actually have a little bit of the highlight that comes in here too that I didn't do. So I'm just going to barely apply it in there. You can always come back and glaze over it again. Glazing is so helpful in creating shines and highlights. Let's keep this part nice and bright right here. This isn't a hard line, don't just draw a hard line. Just stick some brighter white in there, here and there. And 
just a tiny hint of it right here. Make sure you stand back good and far from it to see how it looks. This little spot is kind of bugging me, but that's an easy fix. A little bit of lizard and crimson, a little bit of cadmium red. Let's see, that's kind of a darker area. We'll go just a hint darker with the alizarin. But I'm using very little paint, kind of wiping some of that off. And I can just come in here and again, just tap that little spot out. And now I don't have that hard line that I didn't like. That little highlight that I just added, I want to glaze over that a bit. So I just picked up a bit of matte medium. There we go. And now we can add our bright highlight to the face of our cherry, and it's really only this one. Kind of has one right, right about there. I really like my cherries, and I think they're done. So I'm gonna sign it with this really pretty cherry color. Okay, just kidding. When I stood back to look at it, I decided that the side of this cherry is just kind of weird shaped, and I don't like it. So I'm going back to my angle brush, a little bit of white, and I'm just gonna pull this background in just a little bit farther, starting from about here. So I'm doing the same brush stroke, but I'm overlapping the edge of the cherry a little. Notice I'm not drawing a hard line. And just ever so slightly bringing that edge in just a tiny bit more. And I feel like that's almost, almost about what I'm looking for there. Don't worry if you can still see the cherry a bit on the other side of the line that you're creating. Just focus on the, the shape that you want right now. Bring that in just a little bit right there. Oh, that's much better. Now I can get a heavier white and just cover up any little bit of the red that might still be showing through that background. So see guys, this is why we paint our background after or at least in conjunction with our elements so that we can make those adjustments. And now I really am done. And there's our little cherry still life. I hope you enjoyed using the layers and glazing all to add dimension and color to our overall painting. And I hope that those are things that you'll be able to take on into your own personal paintings as well. Again, thank you so much to all of you who helped me get my first YouTube play button and thank you to YouTube for sending it to me. Now our 30 days of art is coming to a close. We have about a week left, but if you're brand new and you're just joining us now, you can get more 30 days of art right here. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking right here. Thank you as always for painting with me, everyone, and I'll see you next time.